Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over virtual reality with IBM Watson. I'm actually at IBM Interconnect 2017 right now at the Expo, and there's this really neat demo about virtual reality and how IBM Watson can tie in with some of its APIs. So now I'm actually here with Michael, uh, he's going to introduce himself. Sure. Yeah, so uh, my name is Michael Lund, um, and I run a team called Watson Developer Labs. And part of that team uh, is called AR VR Labs. And we've been prototyping um, use cases for developers with IBM technology. And one of our uh, particular outcomes was um, interactive speech interfaces uh, powered by Watson. So we're showcasing that built with Unity uh, using our Watson Unity SDK and two services a tech demo for developers with a how-to guide, which is really the point, that lets uh, a user go into virtual reality and create, modify, or destroy objects with their voice. Exactly. All right. So now, before we continue, uh, I'm going to be pausing the video here, and what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show you a demo that I was doing with uh, the VR headset, uh, and Michael's explaining exactly what this is in the background. So let's cut here, I'll show you that, and then we'll be right back. This is the IBM Speech Sandbox, and it's essentially a tech demo for developers um, to showcase how you can implement um, interactive speech interfaces in virtual reality. Um, and we're showcasing specifically the Unity SDK that we have for Watson, which allows you to drag and drop um, some of the functionality from right within the Unity editor. Um, and we're calling two Watson services, uh, speech to text, obviously, for translating what you're saying to text. Um, turning on the streaming option, so it's always listening to what you're saying. You don't have to use a wake word. Uh, and then we're passing that text transcript to the Watson conversation service, which then parses out the intent of a user. So it'll understand uh, and even do error handling. If you're saying um, something along the lines of make me a big dragon, it'll know you mean create is the intent. And then modifier is large, not big. And dragon is the object. Um, and you can do, you know, small yellow car. You can basically modify the, in this demo, um, the object size and color for most of the 200 in the game. But it's essentially extensible. And what we want it to be is an idea starter for developers so that they can then go to this how-to guide. And this actually lets you rebuild it entirely from scratch yourself uh, or, or alter it and adapt it to work with um, whatever system you want to implement in your experience. And it's not limited to VR, so and it's also not limited to Unity. You could use it uh, because they're REST APIs um, with any uh, uh, programming language or or, um, or editor that you prefer. Um, and it could be AR, it could be gaming, it could be non-gaming use cases like productivity. The sky's the limit. But we think that yeah, he's having fun. But we think that like what's interesting is that this is pretty easy to do. Um, and it's very useful for a lot of different applications. Right now, you're wandering around in VR in most experiences, and you're touching, you're looking, you're seeing, you're hearing, um, but you're not really speaking, and, and so you're on mute. But every VR headset has a microphone. So there's a lot of white space, and, and we'd love to see what developers do with this. Like, 10 me. All right, so welcome back. Now we're done the demo. Uh, and so now we'd like to go over a quick Q&A with Michael about this project. So Michael, would you like to explain a little bit about what this project signifies? Sure. So this represents um, our attempt to better serve the budding uh, VR and AR developer community. Um, we think that we have something very interesting to offer in the, in the form of uh, interactive speech interfaces for um, VR and AR use cases. But really, it goes beyond that. Um, we thought that using the HTC Vive here to give full room scale functionality along with uh, full voice control, which lets you say crazy things like create a large black dragon or create a small blue car or any other combination of an object that exists in the game world uh, and uh, modifiers that you can do, which are size and color. Um, we think that you know it kind of showcases the promise of a system like this. And then we have a how-to guide that shows how simple it is to actually build it. You use uh, two services only, uh, and you use the Unity Watson uh, Watson Unity SDK. Uh, you drag and drop that into the Unity development environment. In this case, but you don't have to use Unity. Um, they're basically REST APIs, uh, and then you have a full um, voice interaction system, which could uh, be for a chatbot, a virtual agent, uh, or it could be for uh, you know controlling an interface or you know any other level of granular functionality, which makes a lot of sense uh, beyond. Exactly. Now, another quick question is, well, why do you think Watson would be really important for virtual reality? 
Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things about the Watson platform that makes sense for virtual reality. One, it's a cloud platform. And that means that whatever your development environment, you can basically deploy anywhere to any device that has uh, internet connectivity because you're making REST API calls, at least in this case. Um, so it's very scalable, you write once. Uh, a lot of the work happens on the back end. Um, in particular with this use case, uh, I would say that Watson has an incredibly accurate speech to text um, uh, service uh, that also is very feature rich. So for example, it's got functionality like streaming, so you don't have to say a wake word like Watson or whatever. You can just start talking and it will understand and parse what you're saying. Um, and then the conversation service is actually uh, what we use to train full chatbots. Um, and that lives in the cloud and you can build dialogue trees and it does some really advanced error handling for you. So a lot of the hard parts of actually building a system like this are obfuscated from the user and it's really kind of underrepresented in the VR world because when you're looking around, walking around, and inhabiting a world, you kind of want to talk to it. And we have something that is an offer uh, for developers that says, well, actually, we, have, we can let you do that. So, yeah, so the Watson Conversation Service actually does really advanced error handling uh, kind of automatically on the back end. So, for example, if I say, give me a huge onyx dragon, uh, it's very well likely going to parse that as the intent is create, not give. Um, because it's a synonym. Uh, and in the context of the sentence, that's really the only matching thing that it can pick. Um, and then the modifiers are uh, large, not big, and black, not onyx. And then the object is dragon. So when a user says that in the game, it's invisible to them. Uh, and it's also, by the way, invisible to the developer. A big black dragon just appears. So that's kind of the promise of something like this. And the, and the use cases for it are kind of endless. Like You can imagine if you're doing a, a tilt brush or an autodesk type of sculpting in VR, what if instead of having to rifle through menus, you just say, give me the brush I had three brushes ago, make it two points bigger in black, and have that appear in your hand. Um, with the how-to guide here, if you were to rebuild this, the system as is would actually support that functionality right now. So there's a lot of really, you know, stuff we haven't even discovered that we really want to get this into the hands of developers uh, and see what they create. That's great. Now, one last thing, one last question I have for you. Uh, can developers learn so this is going to be open sourced, the HTC Vive build. Um, it's already available for a free download from HTC's VR app store, which is called Viveport. Uh, the name of this demo is the IBM Speech Sandbox. So if you just Google that and Viveport, uh, you can get that. But we're also going to be open sourcing the code on GitHub so developers can just take and fork it uh, for this build. And also we've done a Google Daydream build, which will probably never see the light of day in the Google Play Store because they don't really accept demos at this point. Um, but it will be open source on GitHub. Uh, really, this is meant to be an enabling device for developers to say, oh, okay, cool, let me take and modify that. One other thing I'll say about uh, open sourcing, um, uh, there is a how-to guide, so I'll just shamelessly plug that really quickly. So while we're getting the code cleaned up to make it open source, um, we do have uh, a comprehensive how-to guide which will teach developers, such as yourself potentially, Tenme, to rebuild this, um, and that is at ibm.biz is slash Watson underscore uh, VR. That is absolutely perfect. It was great uh, to have this video today. Great uh, to have anything you. Else yeah. to um, no, it's a pleasure to finally meet you in person. I've watched many of the well. videos and can't Thank wait to you. see what you do with this. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. But just before we go, really quick, if you'd like to contact Michael, how can you contact him? So, Twitter, uh, Michael underscore, my last name, Ludden. So, Michael underscore L U double D E N. Um, how else? Yeah, that'll do for now. All right, perfect. So if you'd like to contact Michael, make sure to contact him via Twitter. Please. Of course, my uh, contact information will be down in the description below. Uh, but of course, uh, my email is tachimanygmail.com. Uh, you can leave your feedback, suggestions, comments, questions uh, down in the comment section below. Email them to me or tweet them to me at tachimany as well. Uh, and of course, if you think this video can help anybody else, you know, uh, please consider sharing the video as well, as well as liking the video if you think you enjoyed this video as well. Of course, though, if you want to subscribe to my channel or want to see a lot more of my content, please consider subscribing to the channel as well as it really does help a lot. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, make sure to turn on notifications on this channel as well. Alright, so thank you very much for watching today. Goodbye.